Welcome back to another episode of Feel Free, the only podcast that'll tell you to chase dreams, call you out, and all your bullshit, myself included. I am joined today by my buddy Aiden back for another episode where we're talking about sobriety, physical fitness, wellness, chasing your goddamn dreams, and just having a good time. So, how you doing today? Fantastic. It's great to be back here with you, John. Hell yeah. So you had a... Uh... You had a seven-hour drive today, is that right? Yes, sir. Woke up at 4.45 this morning, killed a great body weight workout, and then uh, hit the open road. Nice. So last time Aiden was on the podcast, uh, you were driving to Colorado. Correct. Right? To work at a ski mountain there. Now on your way back, you felt like stopping by the studio for another episode, right? Couldn't miss an opportunity to be in the studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the first person in the new studio as well. I love it. It looks fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate that. Also wanted to say we did not plan these matching outfits. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> but honestly, great minds think alike, right? That's what Indeed, they, they do. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Dope. Um, so obviously, you're back here to talk about all things... Uh, well, recovery and fitness related, mm -hmm. um, just your self-development journey in general, right? For the listeners, though, I think you, you're hitting a milestone today, right? Yes, sir. Today marks four months of sobriety from alcohol for me. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Feels good. And also a couple months without marijuana, too. Yes, sir. Last time I smoked was New Year's Eve and uh, was just kind of thinking and realized, well, it's about to be a new year. May as well stop now. That's so true. <laughs> Hell yeah. A lot of people use the New Year's resolutions and obviously, you know, it doesn't always work out. I think I did an episode where I talked about that too. But uh, if you could take it and roll with it, yeah. So you're fucking almost, almost three months now without weed. That's huge. Almost two months. If we're, we're at the end of February. January. Uh, almost two months. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so how's that feel then? Oh my gosh, it feels fantastic. Like I was talk talking to you about earlier, I uh, feel like I have superpowers now. I just feel <laughs> like I can handle anything that comes my way. I have clear trains of thought. I can focus. I can concentrate. It just feels really good. I'm also sleeping a lot better. I'm re I'm remembering all of my dreams. Nice. It's it's been a fantastic change and it was something that was a lot tougher for me to give up than alcohol because it seemed to be a lot less of a problem in my life or at least that's what I told myself. Right. But I knew I needed to get rid of it and I'm really glad that I finally made that decision. Yeah, I mean just overall clarity, energy levels. Yeah, I also didn't have the biggest problem cutting that one out. When I actually got sober, it was kind of how you did it. You got sober from the alcohol first and you kind of used the weed to get through those beginning stages because it's a little brutal. Not even just like withdrawals, but like changing what you do for your life, like not going out to bars or not going to certain situations, right? So I think at three or four weeks of being sober from everything else, that's when I gave up weed too. But it wasn't too difficult for me because when I smoked weed, I didn't want to work out. So giving up weed, I was like, all right, I feel like working out now. Yeah, it was something that's you, that you can get rid of that allows you to do all of the things you need to do. Exactly. <laughs> so four months sober from alcohol, uh, coming up on two months sober from weed, uh, huge milestones. And so let's talk about your fitness because what you're posting on Instagram, uh, it's, it's crazy because you, you look like kind of like a movie star like that's what i've been telling people <laughs> say you're coming on the the podcast i'm like dude this guy's fucking shredded he's yoked but you're putting in the work i mean when i heard you did 300 burpees this morning you know that's that's kind of speaking for itself right there indeed yes um i've been working out seven days a week since i got sober so for the last four months i haven't missed a day holy fuck um <laughs> When we spoke last time, I was on a program where I did a different uh, muscle group every day. Right. I'm on a bit of a different program now where I'll do uh, two days of chest, front and side delts and triceps, two days of legs and two days of back traps, lats and rear delts. And then I sprinkle abs in on three of those days. But then Sunday is my rest day. Okay. But rest days, 
are for catching up on push-ups nice. because my new year's resolution was I'm doing a hundred thousand push-ups this year. So I right. have to stay on schedule. And actually, um, speaking of milestones today, I've been a little bit behind on my push-ups and this morning I, fi- I, uh, hit 15,000 for nice. the year. So nice. I'm 15% of my way to the goal. And I decided to calculate how far we are into the year. We're exactly 15% of the way through the year. So I am back on track as of today. Nice. There you so go. That feels good. Jesus. I remember you were starting this and you're like, I'm going to do 50,000 push ups, right? I did well, that for a week and I realized that goal was going to be way too easy to hit. <laughs> I needed something to challenge me. And I said, okay, if I double it, I'm going to have to average about 274 push ups a day. Now that's going to be challenging, but it's definitely doable. So, and I I like even numbers. So a hundred thousand, six figures. Yeah, I'm like, let's do it. Yeah, right. That's fucked. But, <laughs> yeah, that's, I was just telling you that's fucked. Uh, great goal to have. You're putting out a lot of content too. I always like checking on your your push up count, see where you're at. So it's nice that you're back uh, on track for that. So when you say you don't do you don't do the rest days because you're still catching up on push-ups, like you said, do you see yourself doing rest days or will you do a rest week maybe? No. I mean, okay. I, I mean, until the push-up thing is reached though, right? Because that's number one goal, right? Yes, that's my number one goal. <laughs> For sure. Um, I said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Nice. But my rest days, I do really enjoy doing just push-ups because I'm not doing an additional heavy workout with dumbbells, barbells, machines, whatever. It's just right. a light body weight workout. I do like staying active every day. So I can definitely see myself doing that into the future. Nice. Um, I mean, at, at, at the bare minimum, doing my morning routine workout, which is 100 push-ups, 100 squats, and 50 crunches. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean, for someone like you, that's probably pretty easy, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just... It's more of a discipline thing to me at this point. Nice. But I there's something that feels off if I'm not active during the day. So For my sure. rest days will always be more restful, but there will always be activity. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Like I was telling you earlier, I think uh, this past week was the most active I've been in a long time. I did take a rest day on Thursday, though. Um, no push-ups. Um, like full, full on rest day. Okay. And then... The other eight days, I've been extremely active. Now, I wanted to ask, in your fitness routine, there was a lot of lifting and there was a lot of isolated muscle groups. Do you, And then there was abs, too. Do you do cardio? Um, Not really. I would say, if anything, cardio is external. Like, when I was on the mountain, I didn't do a whole lot of snowboarding this season, but I'd get some snowboarding in. Um, running is something I'd like to get back into this summer. It's just not something I haven't done in a long time and I don't have any running shoes. And <laughs> right. every time I try to run in vans, it's just, it's not going to work. Not good for the knees. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> so, um, I do want to introduce a little bit of cardio back into my life, but I do tend to focus mostly on the weightlifting. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, most people hate cardio. Um, I think if you find a cardio that you really like, then it can be fun. But also, you know, like I play a lot of basketball. Yes. Um, my other question was going to be, other than like the weightlifting, you had just stated that you didn't snowboard a lot, which would also be a form of cardio too. Do you see yourself getting into like some sort of extracurricular or hobby or like a sport or like some sort of wrestling? Or are you just going to strictly stick to your workout? Um. I definitely want to get into boxing. Nice. Um, I did that a little bit with my cousin last year, just doing some heavy bag routines and some speed bag routines. And that was probably my favorite form of cardio I've ever done. And just how gassed you feel after uh, <laughs> yeah. after six, 12 rounds on a bag. Um, so boxing and then... Eventually, I would like to get into some other types of martial arts um, when I have more time in the future. Right. That's that's cool. I tried getting into Tai Chi, but that's more like moving meditation. It's not mostly like cardio then. Yeah, I think yeah. uh, jujitsu would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a jujitsu coach uh, on the podcast. Yeah. He's, oh, really? Yeah, he's a black belt in jujitsu. He's a teacher. So 
Um, I have a few other buddies who like jujitsu. I've never really been a big wrestler though. So the whole grappling and rolling around on the ground things never stood out to me. So, um, I have gotten into the stationary bike recently in the last few weeks though. So, okay. Yeah. Cause that does help with my endurance for basketball like a, an assault bike or just a regular bike. Nah, just a regular bike. Okay. Um, well, like at the gym, the stationary ones, not the one where you're like sitting back, the ones you're still sitting up, but not like the spin class ones. Is that what an assault bike is? An assault bike is the one with the fan where the front wheel is and you have the the two arm oh, things God, that no. you're pumped into. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just going hard with your arms and your legs. No, I, no, I don't think they have those at LA Fitness. They okay. got Yeah, they got like ellipticals and normal stationary bikes. I like that in like rowing. Um, I do enjoy rowing. Yeah, rowing's cool. Um, or some time on the arc trainer, if, uh, I, if I'm ever around those. What are those? It's a machine that Cybex makes. It's kind of like an elliptical. I don't know how I could describe the difference, but it feels different. It feels a little bit more uh, flowy, if you will. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I do like those forms of cardio because they're better on the joints. Running's tough, though, because it is hard on the fucking joints. Yes. Yeah. But it makes your bones stronger. It does. Yeah. If you have the right shoes, like you said, can't be running in vans though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're going to fuck your shit up then. <laughs> um, I like Brooks for running uh, my running shoes when I do get around to running. My brother's really big on Nike because he, he's still training. I think he's training for the 800 meter right now, um, but he's been really big on the Nike. So my next question was going to be, how's the nutrition going? How was the nutrition in Colorado? Because you didn't really have like a kitchen, right, to pre prepare your meals? Well, we do have a community kitchen there. So I would do my best to pick one day out of the week where I did a ton of meal prep. And I was able to stick with that pretty well. The quality of the food wasn't always the best. I mean, I was doing my best to just eat chicken, rice, veggies, but like canned chicken. Uh, For sure. Being out in Summit County, the groceries are far more expensive than they are back here. <laughs> you, you leave the grocery store and you're like, I I bought canned chicken and rice. How is it this much? <laughs> but um, I was sticking to a macro plan for a while, trying to eat the same amount of macros throughout five meals in the day. But that ultimately was just really inconvenient. Uh, so I've switched over to a more intuitive form of eating where I just eat good foods. I'm still tracking my daily macros, but they're not evenly divided between meals anymore. So I have like a yogurt bowl that I'll make. I'll have an oat bowl that I make. Uh, chicken and rice is a huge staple. Uh, ground turkey and cream of rice. Uh, I usually like to keep it simple, but occasionally I'll go with some ground beef, but that usually is tough to keep my, uh, my fat levels down with that. Okay. But that's where it comes back to the intuitive eating because ground beef is extremely good for you. It has all of the amino acids the body needs. I've definitely been eating more fat than I was and kind of experimenting with what that does to my body. Like I notice if I'm increasing my fat content a lot, my abs do lose definition, but having the body type that we have, it's really hard to put on any sort of significant weight. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I, I do eat sticks of butter. Uh, people judge me for that and think I'm crazy, but I think it's delicious and butter is very good for you despite what we've been led to believe about that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we could have a whole podcast episode about how things are portrayed here in America, whether that's health or politics or anything like that. So True. Because they even said that red meat's bad for you, bad for your heart. And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, most of the people that are saying this are like really overweight doctors, you know, like I don't look at America and think like, yeah, they got it figured out with health. Right. Yeah. You know, so if you do your own research, <clears throat> you know, I think you'd come to the conclusion that red meat's pretty good for you. I mean, my brother eats steak and ground beef and and fruit and honey, and he's fucking running like an absolute animal, you know. Um, I'm interested on the butter thing, though, you know. My dad would be really happy to hear you say that because he <laughs> loves butter. And he says 
when he dies that we're going to bury him in the casket with just a bunch of butter. I like that idea. Right. I would totally be down for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Send me off in the lake, Johnny, and like shoot one of those flaming arrows at me with mm, all the butter in there. Good like, old Viking <laughs> funeral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, butter butter is nice though. It's it's nice cooking with it too. So, like you said, the the groceries were actually more expensive up there. Now that you're going to be moving back to the Midwest, are you going to be back on that uh the liver grind? Are you going to be back on the organ grind? I'm so excited for that. <laughs> um because being in the mountains, well, especially Colorado, you'd think that there would be local butchers to go to, but a lot of places that were close by to me, you had to buy at least a quarter cow and I don't have a deep freezer or a place to put all of that meat. So I was just getting grass fed ground beef from the grocery store, but no organ meat. So I am very excited to be back in Plymouth, getting my liver, heart and testicle. Um, I was taking some supplements from the fittest, um, some uh, liver, thyroid, adrenal, uh, liver and bone marrow, but you don't get nearly the amount that you're looking for with just supplements. Right. I was going to say the, what is it? The bio availability of it just doesn't compare it if you were to actually eat the the organ itself, right? Yeah. I'm, well, I mean, it's bioavailable. It's just a very small quantity. Ah. Whereas I can just take liver out of the freezer, cut off an ounce hunk, and that's usually good for the day. Right. Put it in my smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you had mentioned when you were here before that you were experimenting with different uh, smoothie recipes in order to, uh, you know, get rid of the liver taste. Yes. I think uh, the next smoothie I'm going to be trying is uh, liver, whey protein, and a few eggs. See how that tastes. Nice. Nice uh, protein fat bomb. Hell Lots yeah. Of vitamins. Yeah, I, uh, I eat a lot of carbs. Uh, but it's mostly fruit, you know. And those are good carbs. Right, you know, as long as you're active. Otherwise, you're just going to crash. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole point of eating carbohydrates is to provide yourself with energy. Right. And they're important for fueling muscle growth after a workout. I didn't know that. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I come and smash a tin of raspberries when I get home from a workout. <laughs> you know, So fucking good. <laughs> I do want to get away from eating processed carbs because I've been really all about the rice cakes. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess plain rice cakes are probably fine, but I'm a sucker for the apple cinnamon ones. Oof. And they do have a lot of sugar in them. But man, they, they sure uh, provide good energy for a workout. I'll tell you that. The apple cinnamon ones sound really fucking fire. They are. Yeah, that's the oatmeal I get too. And so I eat like good. a tablespoon of cinnamon a day, I swear. I put it in my oat bowls. I put it in my yogurt bowls. It's really good for digestion. Yeah. And really? Just other, yeah. Yeah, it's really good for digestion. I know um, it was good for inflammation, but I haven't heard the digestion thing before. Yeah. I think my, my doctor told me that too. Maybe my one other buddy who's really into nutrition told me that as well. Um, I think, well, apples are my favorite fruit too. So anytime you throw a fucking apple in something, I'm going to eat it, you mm. know, for sure. Um, I get shit for this a lot because my favorite apple is red delicious. Oh yeah. That's, that's, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I'll talk a little shit about that. Oh my God. <laughs> the classic lunchbox apple. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a honey crisp guy personally. Uh, there's no taste. That's the most flavorful apple. No, what are you talking it's, about? It's like watery. Honey crisp apples from Michigan in the fall. Okay, that's a little different. I'm going to have to go up there and investigate. It's totally okay. different. And it depends on if they're in season or out of season. Because right. I've definitely tasted red delicious apples that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, they got to be good, though. You can't just go and pick out the ones that aren't good. Because then it's like my buddy's like said, it, you're eating a wax apple. Yeah. Because the skin's really waxy. I get it, you know. But if you get the good ones, like with the good crunch, and they're super sweet, that's it's just... It's my favorite. Actually, Lisa has has given me shit since we've started dating. She goes, you're eating the worst fucking apple, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, whatever. And I go to Jewel and I, I sift through all the apples and I take an apple from each one. I'm like, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try these apples because everyone wants to talk shit about my apple. You know, Red Delicious is still it. That's it. Well, how do you feel about Fuji apples? Fuji are good. Okay. Yeah. I, I like Fuji... Probably second to Honeycrisp. Okay. 
What about Gala? You like Gala? Um, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've had a Gala Apple. I don't yeah. I don't uh experiment with my apples as much as you do. Right, um, right, yeah. I did it out of spite <laughs> because people are just giving me shit. <laughs> like, All right, I gotta try some different apples. I know. It was like I used to get a lot of shit for only watching anime and people raved about Game of Thrones for fucking a decade. I'm like, all right, out of spite, I'm going to watch Game of Thrones, you know, just so I can tell them it's not that good. And I'm like, oh, it's actually pretty good. You, know? <laughs> you, know, so. you never know what you're going to find out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we've talked a little bit about fitness, talked a little bit about nutrition. What are you doing for mental and emotional health? I know you have a really strict morning routine. Are you reading any books, uh, any other hobbies that you're into? Yeah, so um, the morning routine really helps center me every day. Um, immediately upon wake up, make my bed, do my 100 push-ups, 100 squats, 50 crunches, have a mug of herbal tea, meditate for 15 minutes. And then I do a daily reading out of The Art of Living by Epictetus. I've started uh, studying Stoic philosophy. And that has helped me immensely. Um, just it, it's offered me a new perspective on life and not trying to worry about so many things that might happen to you and just accepting them as they come and being the strongest person that you can be in order to face anything that life may throw at you. So I've benefited a lot from that. Um, I've been reading some other mindset books as well. As a Man Thinketh by James Allen is a fantastic one. It's like 20 pages, so I just read it over and over and over again and just kind of get the the messages drilled into my mind. Um, and then I've been reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill quite a bit as nice. well. And just keeping the mindset positive, I think, is really important. Um, guarding your subconscious from what enters it is a very intimidating task because your subconscious picks up everything, every bit of stimuli that enters your mind. So I've been, I've been doing a better job with guarding what enters my subconscious. And a lot of that has to do with keeping my time occupied by reading those books, uh, saying affirmations, um, and just noticing when negative thoughts slip in and immediately replacing them with positivity. So it's it's been tough, but I'm getting better at it. I've noticed my mind becoming stronger. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like it, especially with the stoicism thing. I was going to ask, did you read the uh, the meditations? No, that is on my list to get, though. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's one everyone raves about that one. I think I also have... <clears throat> Letters from a Stoic, I think that's by Seneca. Seneca, okay. Who's also a Stoic. Um, and then Marcus Aurelius is a Stoic. Uh, I've heard good things about the Epictetus one. Um, somebody I had on the podcast a few weeks ago uh, mentioned Epictetus, so I might have to give that one a shot too. Um, it's great because a lot of the passages are either less than a page or a couple pages, so I just do one reading every day, and I'll read it throughout the day and meditate on it and incorporate it and actually epictetus was uh the teacher of marcus aurelius oh really but i feel like he's the, he's more often quoted so i i am excited to get my hands on meditations right yeah it was uh i just finished that one actually summer last year i finished that um right now i'm reading a little frederick nietzsche but that's not Ooh, wow. yeah yeah that's not really any sort of <laughs> stoicism or Positivity, I would call it, um, or self-development is what I would call it. It's more, yeah, just strict philosophy at that point. I think I also listened to a biography on Abraham Lincoln that won the Pulitzer Award last year. It's pretty intense. Yeah. That sounds really fascinating. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty dope. And, I mean, not to get off topic, let me just tell you this, okay? This man was, like, losing OK, like we think of him as like, you know, Emancipation Proclamation, Civil War, guy's president in 1860. OK, leading up to that, this man could not win. Right. Because he was like anti-slavery, he just never won any political races. We just get shit on all the time, you know, and then finally just like fucking turns it around. People started trusting him and shit. And then, 
yeah, he becomes one of the greatest presidents ever, you know? Napoleon Hill actually talked about that in Think and Grow Rich, about how Abraham Lincoln didn't really hit his stride until he was past 40. Yep. Talking about how um, a lot of men hit their stride between the ages of 40 and 60, which is kind of fascinating. Right. And I think we were talking about this earlier, about when I was saying I was too hard on myself. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. And in this really fast-paced society, and I think this is important with how you're talking about your mental fortitude and how strong you're getting mentally. When we open up our phones, maybe it's social media or maybe it's the news and all these things entering, like you said, um, like the stimuli in the subconscious, I think being able to com not compare ourselves. So like I was saying, I'm 30 years old, right? I'm trying to compare myself to maybe the John in 10 or 20 years. You got to be right here. You got to be 45-year-old John right now at the age of 30 in terms of mental toughness, success, and development, right? But that's unrealistic to think. You oh, know? you're saying that you're trying to compare yourself now to who you want to be in the future? Exactly, right? And it gets me down. Or other aspects of life when people over here in America, very fast-paced, capitalistic world, it's like, you got to get out of college. You got to get a job. You got to find a wife. You got to have kids, get the fucking house. You got to do this, bang, bang, bang. And then you start comparing yourself to everyone else. Well, this is the way things are supposed to do. And then you just get like sad thinking that way. You're like, well, that's not my life. Yeah. You can't compare to other people. And that is really hard to pull yourself out of that because I was stuck in that for the longest time, comparing myself to my friends who were more successful to people I saw on the internet that were more successful. But on this personal development journey, I've really been able to reel it back in and, and say like, where do I want to be in 10 years? And what do I have to do today to move towards that goal? Right. And that's what I've been focused on. And I, I don't compare myself to who I'll be in 10 years, but I think, will myself in 10 years be proud of what I'm doing today? I like that. Will I look back and be like, wow, 28 year old Aiden, he really started getting his shit together. And, <laughs> and that's the reason I'm where I'm at now. <laughs> right. It's a very, uh, I can say that's a very stoic way to think about it. The whole looking back and being like, yeah, I'm proud of the person I was when I started making those changes, you know, which comes with not being hard on yourself, I think. And also, yeah, like, I still fall into that trap. I don't know if I compare myself to other people as much as, like I said, I compare myself to the version of John I think I should be, you know. And that's the word should. Should. What does that mean? Expectations. Expectations. That don't need to be there, can't be met. Actually, yeah, just can't be met. Stupid, you know. It's one thing to have goals and then it's one thing to have expectations. You yes. Know? Expectations can ruin a lot of things. Right. I think it's important to have goals and just to be accountable to them, to say like, all right, if this is where I want to be, this is what I have to do. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm not in alignment with my goal and I can be a little hard on myself. I mean... But like you said, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. We need to be able to break every once in a while because the road to success is filled with speed bumps. Right. Um, but it is important to take course corrective action. Afterwards. To, yes. Yeah. But like we were talking about earlier, how you had the, those nights where you watched <laughs> Lord of the Rings and ate ice cream. And I had that night where I ate a shit ton of candy and binge Netflix yeah. We needed those. Like you might feel bad about it in the moment, but you look back and you're like, all right, it's kind of a nice little break from all of this personal development. Now I can move forward, learn the lesson from the experience. Right. And keep on going. Yeah. Get back on the horse. Keep going. Yeah. I think doing things like that just kind of means your soul was trying to tell you something like, hey, fucking ease up. You know, I've been going hard for a minute now, you know. And, you know, burnout's no joke. So you definitely got to uh, definitely got to face that. And if, like you said, if you miss a goal, I think being able to change things up like a routine, like if the way you're going about something isn't working, don't quit, but reevaluate, you know, 
Like if I don't like working out at a certain time, there's definitely another time during the day that I can figure out a better time to work out. You know, um, if I feel like shit eating a certain type of food, but it's easy to, to get, it's easy and convenient. I'll stop eating it and try and cook a different meal. You know, like we have to be able to be to adapt. Right. Right. And, uh, it's really easy to slip up and then go scorched earth and just say, fuck it all, you know, or like, I mean, for you right now, that seems like probably outlandish because you're like, you've got a really good routine going in terms of your fitness, your mental uh, fortitude and your nutrition. And that's like locked in too. I, I've been through a lot of ups and downs in my recovery away from drugs and alcohol. And there's been moments where I've been like what you're doing. And then there's moments where it's like, I can't work out. I'm just going to play video games for four months and eat like shit and smoke cigars, you know? And I don't know if, I don't know if I need to do that again. You know, I hope the last time I did that was now my authentic self saying, Hey, if you're going to like eat ice cream and watch movies for a few days, just realize that you can go to the gym and get back on your horse, you know? Yeah. It's okay to slip up. You don't have to completely quit. Right. Regret is not a choice. It's a guideline. I like that. Yeah, I can definitely tell you're reading the stoicism for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you'll definitely like the the meditations then. It's a lot of that stuff. Um, any hobbies other than like working out and stuff? Not really. No? I've uh, I've pretty much eliminated everything from my life that isn't working out reading writing or making content fuck um like it got to the point snowboarding is one of my favorite things in the world to do but towards the end of my stint at copper i just i didn't feel like going at all my friends were like do you want to go out one last time before you leave i'm like nope i'm just i'm not interested anything that's not getting me closer to my goals i'm not interested in because i spent the last 10 years fucking around so much <laughs> Like I, I got it in. I, yeah, <laughs> I got in all the partying, all the lazing around, all the hobbies, not to say that I won't have hobbies in the future, but I'm very much in grind mode now. Nice. I have my eyes on some goals and I'm, I'm working really hard towards creating the life that I want so that I can have some money, have some financial freedom, and then reevaluate okay what do i want to do with my free time now that's that's kind of um where i'm at right now it's a good place to be sounds like it feels yeah. good I've, I've never felt this before and that's another thing the sobriety has helped me with i've just like i'm all about it now <laughs> yeah it's uh it's a nice it's a nice grind to be on i honestly i started going to na like i was telling you um i'm not super big on the book or you know, the program itself, I have read through it and is I that, have, is that similar to AA? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Narcotics Anonymous is very similar to Alcoholics Anonymous, like the 12 step program and stuff like that. Maybe there's a little changes here and there in the books. Um, but I did notice that my therapist and mentor at the time who helped me get sober in my first three years, he definitely helped me through those steps, whether I realized it or not, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, so that's really good. And the community aspect too, it's nice going there once a week and just talking to other sober people and just hearing kind of their struggles or their thought processes, you know, um, cause I haven't had a lot of that. I like talking to Brandon and Muncie and now you about it because yeah, I'm, I'm really big on the sobriety thing. It's completely changed my life for the better, you know? Even if you have a bad day, like it's way easier to deal with when you're sober. Yes. It's <laughs> honestly, I I've come to believe that sobriety is a prerequisite for any sort of meaningful success. All the people that I see online that are extremely successful, people that I follow, all of them are sober. And just seeing what Brandon has done with his life. I love being a part of the circle of you, Muncie and Brandon, like you said, being able to talk with other people who have gone through the same thing and are all moving forward with their lives. I think uh, the sobriety is very important. 
And I, I try not to push it on people because I know a lot of people do enjoy, a lot of people can enjoy drinking responsibly and just have that moderation. But I also do want to push the message like, you should you should try being sober. <laughs> it's, you should try it. It's incredible. I mean, I've just started to li- to feel my intuition come through more and just be able to listen to that. And that's something that I feel like was very quieted by the substances for many years. And I just feel like I'm I'm moving in the right direction and I'm I continue to receive signs from the universe that I am moving in the right direction. And I can pick up on those signs and feel gratitude for them. And then more signs keep coming. Yeah. I was going to say, what did you say earlier when I mentioned that you had, you'd quit mar- marijuana too. And you're like, yeah, it's like a superpower. Yeah. A sobriety is like a, is like a fucking superpower. Yeah. I believe like two weeks after quitting weed, I just felt, like wow this is a whole whole new level <laughs> <laughs> of clarity it's fucking insane <sighs> yeah i wouldn't trade it for anything you know i'm uh i got three more months and then i'll be five years sober so damn i, I always th- keep thinking it's fucking crazy man that's an awesome milestone man yeah thanks <laughs> it's, it it gets crazier as i think about it and like what we were talking about before sometimes i do get down on myself for not Uh, completing the things I want. And then I mentioned that to somebody at NA and they go, hey, but you were sober today. I was like, yeah, you're fucking right. And then I'm like, shit, I've been sober for almost five years. It's like fucking something right there. Goddamn, you know? That's exactly what I said to myself when I had that candy Netflix night. I, It felt almost like a relapse to me, but I'm like, I'm still sober. I just ate a bunch of shit and and watched some Netflix. But I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, didn't do any drugs. Right. Well, it's because you you had uh, you had channeled it a little bit, you know, that uh I call I call him my fiend, you know. Um sometimes you do channel that if I channel it with the video games or the uh the sweets or something like that. You know, the the fiend in me will never die. It's just you have to direct the uh the lower self in a positive manner, you know, as Brandon and I would talk about, you know, it's, it's funny talking about the dichotomy between the higher self and the lower self, because there's like this fearlessness that the lower self had, or like our old selves that used to use, we were fearless. We're just like, I'm just going to drink and party and do whatever. I'm not afraid of shit. I'm just going to go fucking hard, you know, but that came with a very destructive, uh, very destructive behavior. And now as you're sober, I'm like, well, I want that fearlessness, you know, in my life. I want that energy, you know, but I want it to be positive and healthy, you know? So I think that's been my ultimate goal in recovery other than healing and being sober is like, I want to channel my authentic self, that energy. I want to find the authentic (laughs) fiend. Yeah. (laughs) Just like loving and living life completely like that, you know? It's a nice journey, you know? It is. I feel like I've been able to channel that, channeling my authentic fiend into exercise. Right. Um, the exercising every day. Another reason why I don't like taking rest days is the discipline that it's built in me, which is another thing that has helped being sober is building discipline. But then the building discipline has also helped me be sober. So it's kind of like a, a self... <laughs> fulfilling prophecy right i don't think that's the right term but <laughs> uh it's like a it's like a loop yeah it's yeah. a it's a positive feedback loop right but i just i'm just able to do it every day like a lot of days i do like working out but there's plenty of days where i don't feel like doing it but i always do it like i did those 300 burpees this morning in 10 sets of 30 and those last three sets I did not want to do. <laughs> and and the hotel breakfast started, the smell started coming into the gym. So I could just <laughs> smell bacon. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I don't want to finish. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. But I got down and did them. And I felt great about it afterwards. And I've just gotten a lot better at keeping my word to myself. That's a big thing about doing these 100,000 push-ups this year is I said I'm going to do it. 
and I'm going to do it. And once I've completed that, that's going to be a huge mental thing for me, whether I realize it or not, that I, I keep my word to myself now, which is something I never used to do. I used to let myself down a lot. I used to sell myself short a lot. I think that's part of the reason why I started the year saying I'm going to do 50,000 push-ups because I was scared of setting too big of a goal. Mm -hmm. But after that first week, I'm like, no, that's too easy. I can do 100,000. It's insane. But I know you're going to do it. So I don't see you not <laughs> doing it. How about that? I'm well on my way. Yeah. And I, I post an update every morning on Instagram. I got to stay accountable to people. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brandon makes a joke. He goes... I got a post that I made my bed and my daily reading for my fans because I owe it to them because they're holding me accountable, John. I'm like, all right, for sure. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to hold yourself accountable for shit like that. I, I definitely slip up sometimes, but I have been very consistent with my writing lately. So whether that's in my phone or on paper or typing. I'm actually really old school, so I write everything by hand. I love writing in my journal. Yeah. That's my favorite way to do it. Yep. The phone is nice because it's easier to make edits. Like when I'm writing content, I'll go on my phone or laptop. But if I'm just kind of doing a mind stream, getting my thoughts out on paper is always the best way to do it for me. For sure. Yeah, I just sometimes won't be able to crank out more than like a page with my hand. You know, because then it just like starts cramping. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've gotten better at being able to type now more because I am trying to work on the next book, you know, but also with the podcast too. I have a lot of the next book written actually. So I just need to plan it, you know. So I like how you've been talking about holding yourself accountable because that is definitely something I need to do when it comes to the, the next book thing. Um have a timeline and stick to it. Right. Yeah. I have one written down actually, and I keep it in my planner. I just need to look at it more so it actualizes in my brain, you know. That's something good to have on the wall or out on your desk so you can see it every day. Right. And like a deadline. Yeah. It stays real. Right. I was good with homework deadlines for some reason. I would do it all the night before anyway, but yeah, like I was a procrastinator. Right. The shit got done though, you know? So but I need to see those deadlines in order to actualize them. So, yeah. Um, honestly, we've talked about fitness, nutrition, uh, holding yourself accountable, your new love for stoicism, your sobriety, recovery, um, and then some other shit that I've thrown in there that I was planning on. But, yeah, it made for a good conversation nonetheless. Do you got anything else you want to talk about? Anything for your, your fans? Anything for my fans? Not that I can think of right now. It has it has been a good conversation. I've also been up for a very long time today. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything out there for anybody who might be struggling with holding themselves accountable? Any tips for that? I would say start small. Um, start with little daily actions that you... Tell yourself that you're going to do something and then do it. Um, personal development, a big thing, a big part of that is about stacking wins daily. So whether it's a big win or a tiny win, it's still a win and those wins compound over time. So uh, Brandon always likes to say, and I'm a huge proponent of this as well, make your fucking bed. <laughs> say you're going to do it and do it. Um, wake up time is another good one. Say you're going to wake up at a certain time and you're not going to snooze and your alarm goes off, you get out of bed. Little things like that help build discipline into yourself and then you can move on to bigger and bigger things of uh, staying accountable to those. So start small. Right. Yeah, I think that's really great. I was actually listening to a book, Atomic Habits. Oh, yeah. I read that last yeah. year. Yeah, it's a good one. Um I think he talks about that earlier in the book too. So I've actually been also trying to set smaller, more achievable goals in order to build better habits, right? So I think that's a really applicable thing because sometimes we we put a really big goal in our head and we're like, I got to do this, right? And then it's overwhelming. You're like, well, I don't even know how to fucking start, you know? But if you do start small with these small wins, small little habits, 
once you start getting those small wins and victories, you start stacking that shit like compound interest. I think Brandon said that one time, but um, I totally get it though. Um, and the compound interest is you won't see it at first, but it does happen. And all it, you won't see it and all of a sudden it'll be huge and you'll be like, oh, wow, I've been stacking all these wins. I have this discipline and it seemed like it came overnight, but it is the result of doing that shit every day, even when it feels like it's not doing anything for you. Right. I think another thing that people might get discouraged about, I was going to ask if you had any advice for somebody who might be struggling with thinking they need to get sober, right? And one misconception that people have, in my opinion, and that I've seen in NA and recovery is people think that when they get sober, all of their problems are going to be fixed, right? And I don't think that's true at the start but it definitely gives you the tools and the discipline in order to heal yourself, right? But you don't see like, you don't start to see those things within the first week or two. You're like, well, I quit drinking and smoking. Why isn't my life fixed in two weeks? And it's like, well, you're fucking up for like, you know, like a decade like I was or a decade like you. You're trying to fix yourself in two weeks, you know? Um, so not getting discouraged about that and realizing that the compounding interest is going to come a little later down the road right? Yeah. It's, it's really all about sticking with the decision once you've made it and knowing that it's the right thing to do. Um, quitting or uh, getting sober in general is not going to fix all your problems, but it will eventually give you the tools to deal with your problems in a healthy, constructive way and not be overwhelmed by them. Not feel like you're drowning in life, but feeling like you can meet any situation head on right even the bad days are easy to deal with when you're sober yeah like for example um when i lost my mom two years ago i was still drinking pretty heavily during that time drank a lot to cope with her death um and now that i've gotten sober i recently found out that my dad is going to have to have heart surgery and it's just kind of scary to go through it with our family because we just lost my mom recently and now my dad's going through this major surgery. But I guess my point is that now that I'm sober, I feel like I can deal with that. I can deal with whatever outcome happens. I can be the rock to hold my family together, to be that emotional support for them. And I just feel... Like, of course, I'm a little scared, but I'm, I'm ready to deal with whatever happens because I'm sober, because I have been practicing this discipline in my life. I'm just ready to take on whatever life throws at me. And that's where the stoicism comes in, too. Right. I was going to say, I'm sorry to hear that, but it looks like you are in the right spot to be dealing with something like this. And it's not easy at all, but... I think you you are definitely going to be the rock to hold your family together through this. And that's a that's a beautiful thing too. Yeah. It um, feels good. I, I feel proud of where I'm at. And I feel like I've been a good influence on my dad too. He's he's getting jacked now. He's cutting back on his drinking. Like he he's a strong motherfucker. He's gonna be okay. I think you're influencing a lot more people than just your dad, but that's awesome too. <laughs> Hell yeah. So keep uh Say keep doing what you're doing and posting about it because you're you're helping a lot of people with that too. People you don't even know yet. Also, people are gonna come across your content and they're gonna be inspired like a motherfucker. To see what you're doing. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of the most supportive people have been strangers on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Especially when you're starting out too. Um yes. Yeah, I think uh yeah, you you're definitely where you need to be. I'll tell you that much. Um, so what is next? What's next on this next chapter? You're moving back home. I hear you and Brandon are going to start a rival podcast against me now. That we are. It's going to be called the Feel Freer podcast. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. No, yes. Uh, the, the podcast is in the works. Um we have some other things in the works as well. I don't want to say too much about, um, I'll say stay tuned to our Instagram. 
Um, I plan on expanding to more platforms this year, get on YouTube and TikTok as well. Uh, but for now, Instagram is the main platform I post on. Follow me at ADT.fitness. But all I can say is I'm very excited for this next chapter. Brandon and I actually had a conversation earlier today about some puzzle pieces that have been falling into place at, very recently. At the And everything seems to be aligning. So it feels good to be where I'm at. Very excited for what's going to happen over the next year. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring all the homies up with us. I'm I'm ready for that. So goddamn, that's dope. Obviously, I don't want too much. I don't want the details, but just to know that you two are going to be putting in some really big work, making some big moves uh, together. I think it's going to be great to have you back in the Midwest, especially with Brandon and Muncie. And as Brandon was talking about in the last podcast, I had him and Muncie on like, yeah, some pieces are definitely falling together. So whatever is going to happen in 2024 is going to be dope as fuck. I already say that. That is for sure. Hell yeah. Um, I think we've had a pretty good episode so far. Um, follow him at ADT Fitness on Instagram. ADT.Fitness. ADT.Fitness. I'm also going to drop the handle in the description. Um, give my man a follow. Check out his content. Uh, follow his story on self-development, fitness, stoicism, and other uh, living happy, healthy, authentic tips and tricks. And also watch this man do a fucking 100,000 push-ups in a year. It's going to be absolutely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, we're heading out, so stay up and feel free.